inside the shed. Hi again, this is Tom, Senior Technician at Clean Light Corporation. Today we're going to go over rotary switches. Now we're only going to go over a couple of them because they're basically the same, whether it's a two stack, three stack, ten position, eight position, they're pretty much the same switch. The biggest problem with rotary switches is finding out where the power comes in at and where the off position is. All eight position rotary switches, the power comes in on 11 and 21. The biggest problem is finding out where the off position is. Now, if you look on any rotary switch that you buy, you have a little notch that's cut inside the shaft. This right here. That is always the off position. That's always stop. So now if you look at this rotary switch, you've got 11 and 21 coming in, and the notch is with it. So that means that 11 and 21 is going to be stopped, and the notch is going to be stopped. So when you mount this, and you put the point around it, it's actually going to point to 11 and 21. So that's stop. When you go to some of the other switches, this notch is going to be 180 degrees out. So if you put that up to a stop, where it's supposed to be, the incoming power wires are going to be the opposite of where the pointer is. First thing you have to look at is 11 and 21 lined up with this notch or isn't it? If it isn't, then your switch is going to be 180 degrees. So you're going to be wired down at the bottom for in and stop's going to be at the top. Which is very easy to see on this QC switch. This one is 180 degrees out compared to the other one. My power coming in, it's a 10 position so it's on 10 and 20. The notch is 180 degrees from it so right now I'm pointed to stop and the incoming power is down at the bottom. Check the notch and check the power coming in. That'll tell you whether you're 180 degrees out or whether you're straight in. That is the biggest problem with all of the switches. Different manufacturers do it different way. Switches work the same way. On a standard rotary switch, all of these are just screw inlets. Get yourself a screw starter, start the screws on it, put your wires on accordingly. The first stack on this rotary switch is going to be the function switch. So all of your functions are going to go on the first stack. Motor starter wires are all going to go on the second stack. Reason being is the second stack on two or three stack rotary switch is a shorting stack. So when you turn this from wash to rinse, your motor starter does not shut off and come back on. It stays on. There's a little bit of a delay in here when you turn it so the motor starter does not go on and off on the second stack. On the first stack, if you put your motor starter wires on that, every time that you move off that position, motor starter is going to shut down and turn back on. The hardest thing on a motor starter is start and stop, start and stop, start and stop. So you don't want it to do it. So if you're putting the motor starter wires on the second stack and you're going from wash to rinse, there's enough of a delay there that the motor starter will not kick out and kick back on again. Always put motor starter on the second stack. Whether it's a two stack or a three stack, it's always a second stack that shorts. So motor starter is always going to go on the second stack. The only reason that you would use a three stack in any kind of situation would be is if you have a separate rinse solenoid. That would go on the third stack. So if you're running hot water for uh, wax and, and cold water for rinse and hot water for soap, you're going to have a jumper wire that runs from the first stack to the third stack to turn on the cold water or turn on the hot water, whichever one it's going to be. Basically, that's as simple as it gets on these. Now we're going to go to Clean Rights QC switch. Best thing since bread of bread. You want to change the switch out? You unplug it. Here's your switch. Take it in the bench where it's nice and warm. Wire it up accordingly to what you have. When you're ready to put it back in again, plug it back in. You're looking at five minutes. There's no screws to it. It's all pop on and pop off. This switch is actually 180 degrees out. Here's the notch. Here's the power in. So if I got power in down at the bottom, 12 o'clock is going to be my stop position. Anytime I put that notch at 12 o'clock, that's where stop's at. If I put it at 1 o'clock, that's where stop's at. So this notch is going to determine again where your stop position's at. Alright, I made up a little test station on mine so that I can test coin boxes as I bake them and rewire them and whatever. Now, this is actually a pump stand. It does the same thing as a pump stand does. Instead of turning on solenoids or motor starters, I'm turning on lights. All right, right now we're on stop. It just shows I have power to the unit. I'm going to go to pre-soak. One light. Tiring engine, one light. 
Now, when I hit motor start, when I hit soap, motor starter, and soap. Rinse, wax, low pressure, low pressure, low pressure, low pressure, and I'm back to stop again. Same thing, the slot in the, in, in, in the front of the switch is the stop position. 10 and 20 is the power in. So no matter which switch you have, it's always the same way. I can't, I, I can't say it too many times. The notch is stop, 10 and 20 is power in, or 11 and 21 is power in. With the QC switch or any switch that you're wiring, you want to make sure that you have the same color code from the rotary switch to the end of your coin box or your terminal strip. If you're running new wire, then you're going to run the same color code all the way back to your pump stand. So if you want to change a function on, on a QC switch to correspond with what you have back in there, it's just a matter of popping the wire off, going back to the plug, finding out what color is what function, reinserting that color in that position. So if you're going to change the QC switches or if you're already using QC switches, you can pre-wire a switch, have it laying on your bench, on your shelf or whatever. One goes down, unplug it, take it out, plug it in, it's ready to go. Bring that one back in, do the same thing with the next pair. One reason I like these, they come in 8 and they come in 10 position. But always, always make sure the color code runs the same from the switch back to your terminal strip. The plug is labeled, so it's easy to do. Motor starter wires are brown on this, they always go on the second stack, back behind the high pressure function. Soap, rinse, wax. Now, this QC switch will also work with, uh, with uh, variable drive, frequency drive units. Each one of these prongs are individual, so you have 10 different outputs here. You can run low pressure off of this, you can run medium pressure off this on a frequency drive unit without having to add the third stack to it to give you a second output. It's pretty much as simple as that. The one thing is, is when you put the switch in, you're going to have the pointer pointing on stop, the next position over is pre-soak, the next position on your rotor is going to be pre-soak. So if you follow your rotary switch and your decal clockwise all the way around, you're going to go in the back and do clockwise all the way around on the back of the switch. So if you put clockwise on the front, clockwise on the back, your switch is going to be wired correctly. Then make sure they follow the same color code all the way back to the terminal strip. That's pretty much a short course on rotary switches. If you have any further questions on it, just give us a call. We'll be more than happy to help you.